Hello, my name is Gergely Tokac. I'm from Slovakia, from the Slovak University of Technology in Bratislava, the Faculty of Mechanical Engineering. Thank you for watching our presentation. Our paper is titled Float Shield, an open source air levitation device for control engineering education. You can find this paper under the number 1041, or you can search for our names or the title of the paper if you're interested in reading it. Teaching control engineering and mechatronics at a university level course requires laboratory equipment and tools, uh, so-called trainers, so that students can gain hands-on experience. Commercial devices, such as the ones shown on this slide, are well-made quality equipment, but they are usually very expensive, large, complicated, and thus cannot be taken home by students to finish their assignments or do thesis work. Now, many of these devices require closed source software to function such as MATLAB or LabVIEW, so that adds to the cost, and they require various accessories such as amplifiers, control PCs, and such. One more thought on commercial devices is that they seem to underrepresent the microcontroller implementation of uh, control algorithms and most use PC-based or even a PLC-based uh, system to implement the control algorithm. An alternate route to buying commercial equipment for teaching laboratories is to create your own improvised laboratory devices. These will be one-of-a-kind designs that usually remain local to a laboratory or to a small research team. Now, of course, this route is very cheap and uh, such devices can made uh, with a minimum of material use but of course most of them are fragile sensitive setups they are not very well documented so they are truly one of a kind and thus we cannot create teaching materials across several universities as an open source course I'm sure everyone is by now familiar with the Arduino open source community and the Arduino microcontroller prototyping devices. This can be used to uh, make a variety of fun projects or even serious ones. They are very cheap and most students can afford their own. They are open source, so their inner working can be studied and even improved upon. They are easy to buy anywhere in the world. Moreover, they are standardized, meaning that the electrical and mechanical layouts are compatible even across different devices. They come with a free integrated development environment called the Arduino IDE, and the community itself offers an abund abundance of learning materials, teaching materials, uh, help, and even inspiration. Now, the Arduino devices can be expanded by the so-called shields. So this means that if you take the Arduino, which hosts the microcontroller unit, you can buy or even make a var uh, variety of so-called shields. These are printed circuit boards that implement some sort of hardware function. And if the uh, shield is pushed onto the electrical connections of the Arduino, you have expanded the uh, microcontroller by additional circuitry or functions. Based on this motivation, my students, colleagues and I have started an open source initiative not so long ago that we called Automation Shield. Automation Shield is meant to create novel tools for control engineering and mechatronics education that implement a lab experiment onto a single Arduino expansion shield. By this, we essentially fit a tiny control or mechatronics laboratory into the palm of your hand. That, not unlike the Arduino initiative itself, is cheap, open source, it is possible to build at home even by beginners, it is standardized and comes with a free software library that is compatible with the Arduino IDE and, in addition to that, MATLAB and Simulink. In this paper, we focus on air flotation devices. Air flotation devices use a blower or a fan to create an airstream in which we place a small ball and the height of the ball is controlled by a suitable algorithm. Now the idea of air 
flotation devices is not new to us, and there have been many, many others who used air flotation devices for teaching and experimentation. Some of these improvised devices can be seen on this slide. As I have argumented before, most of these devices are one of a kind, usually even large and fairly complicated, so that they cannot be easily replicated or taken home by the students. As of the commercial world, I have not found a single case when a commercial uh, manufacturer was selling air flotation devices, which is to me surprising since there are many, many manufacturers making magnetic levitation devices, for example, and other typical control engineering trainers. Instead of creating yet another air flotation device, we aimed to offer a sort of reference design which uses standard, easy to find components and 3D printing so that anyone interested in the world can replicate the same exact hardware and even use our software and examples for testing. Our air flotation device uses a fan placed at the bottom. This of course creates an air stream for the ball to levitate in. And the position of the ball is sensed by a time of flight sensor using a laser beam. Besides these two essential components, the uh, actuator and the sensor, the printed circuit board on which the uh, entire experimental system is placed just contains the components necessary to drive the fan and a potentiometer for the user to set the desired height for the ball if needed. Since the hardware itself is very simple, the electronic semantics are also self-explanatory. For more details, please refer to the paper. One more additional note to this is that since the fan requires higher powers that uh, uh, the user can draw from the USB connection, and outside additional 12 volt uh, voltage source is required and this can be plugged in to the Arduino board itself. We offer everything that is necessary to create one of these devices, manufacture them for your laboratory, for your research team or even by individual students. And since this is an open source and free non-commercial initiative, we provide the uh, schematic files for the uh, electronic design in an editable form. We uh, provide the PCB in an editable form and the circuit board uh, in a manufacturer compatible format that can be sent out to numerous manufacturers all over the world and can be made for as little as $1 a piece. In addition to the electronic schematics, one uh, needs uh, mechanical components and electronic components, and these can be just uh, uh, bought in stores. And the only other um, component ca that cannot be bought readily or off the shelf are the mechanical components, which can be 3D printed. And of course, for these, we provide the uh, necessary materials and files as well. We also provide a sort of shopping list for every necessary electrical or mechanical component down to the last resistor and screw. What is interesting uh, that based on this calculation, the total price excluding labor or shipping comes to about 30 euros, which I think is very affordable for a universal teaching or even research device. We have chosen not to include the price of the Arduino or the 12 volt uh, external uh, voltage source or power source into this calculation since these elements can be uh, reused for uh, other uh, projects or uh, experimental systems as well. There is a simplified application programming interface or API written in CC++ included within the so-called automation shield library for the free Arduino IDE. The idea here is to create very simple functions or actually methods for the user to be able to program their closed loop control or system identification or any other related applications without the need to write their own uh, uh, driving or driver functions. Of course, this can be uh, part of the uh, education process as well, 
but in many cases uh, it's easier to uh, simplify this procedure. So for example, uh, we have included everything in the so-called float shield object. For this, we use the begin method, which is a standard way uh, to initialize uh, hardware in the uh, Arduino dialect of the C++ language. For uh, calibration, we use calibrate. For reading the object, the ball height uh, into a variable, we use sensor read to uh, push or to send a certain percentage of power to the fan, we use actuator write. And finally, we use reference read to read the actual reference position into a variable. The automation shield library provides many more functions that we cannot discuss uh, right now, uh, just that you have an idea. Some of these are for sampling and some of these are for PID control and uh, such. Some educators choose MATLAB for their teaching. Uh, since MATLAB offers numerous functions uh, to uh, study and simulate control engineering, mechatronics, system identification or signal processing concepts. Now to control a device from MATLAB, we have to use a sort of pseudo real-time connection, but still for sampling times uh, necessary with the float shield, this is uh, enough. For the MATLAB API, we chose exactly the same keywords and the same function names. So once the students can use one interface, the other one comes naturally. I should not forget about Simlink, for which we also provide a small collection of algorithmic blocks, which represent various hardware functions of the float shield or the entire float shield device. The student or even researcher can use these blocks and then combine them with the uh, usual selection found in Simlink, transcribe automatically this code into C, C++ and deploy it to hardware and this will create a real-time control or any other application. The standardized hardware and software interface enables us to create open course material. The first steps towards this open course material are the examples that are included within the Automation Shield library. For example, every student needs to learn about modeling, data acquisition, pre-processing and parameter estimation. And we have included some examples with our library for these typical tasks along with identifying a transfer function model, a linear state space model, and a nonlinear, more advanced state space model for the float shield device. As for typical classroom examples, we also include the bread and butter of control engineers in mechatronics that every student needs to learn and know, and that is PID control. Well, we have PID control implemented in the Arduino environment using our uh, library. And this example uh, is a part of the code is seen on the slide. Of course, upon uploading and deploying this code, the students can use just the free Arduino IDE to uh, log and watch the control process. And of course, the results can be exported to MATLAB as well. Here you see uh, the results of a typical example where the ball uh, follows a preset trajectory. This example is implemented in MATLAB as well. We get the same um, results naturally. And of course, in Simlink as well, the way of programming uh, such a control loop is a bit different by using the graphical blocks. But here again, the students can use the live scopes or even switches and uh, any other uh, possible connection between the hardware and the deployment computer to manipulate and control and design their very own live applications. Since the submission of our manuscript to this conference, we have continued on working and added more typical examples, such as linear quadratic control to our library, this LQ has been implemented for Arduino, for MATLAB, and for Simulink as well. For more advanced control courses or even thesis works, we have added a linear model predictive control or MPC 
uh, we uh, provide a linear MPC implementation which can run on an 8-bit processor such as the one on the Arduino by using the microwave MPC suit. This was the work of my uh, student and uh, current co-author Peter Khmurciak. And we have also added a uh, linear MPC working in serial real-time real and solving the problem just as you would do in a simulation in Quadprog, but this speed of uh, today's computer is enough to uh, control the ball in this pseudo real time. This implementation uses no toolboxes. It's an open Im implementation in M5 so that the students can learn more about MPC as well. The FlowChill device is not the only trainer we are working on. We uh, also offer free open source reference designs for a variety of other control and mechatronics trainers, such as the typical ball on bean experiment, but this time on a single Arduino shield, a magnetic levitation experiment, a rotational flexible link experiment, a typical motor speed control experiment, an optical and a thermodynamics experiment. Please feel free to visit our website at www.automationshield.com for more information on this non-commercial project. Before I wrap this presentation up, I would like to uh, use the opportunity to mention how these very unusual pandemic times are connected to the idea of take-home laboratories which I think many of you agree would be highly desirable for many institutions and students at lockdowns or other unusual times. Several of my students uh, have their automation shield devices currently at home and thus are a lot less worried about their thesis project than their peers. That would be all for this uh, presentation. I would like to thank you very much for your attention. Please read our paper, and you may also want to have a look at our website, or if you have any questions, feel free to contact me via email or social media.